Last episode of the macro month and today I want to show you two rather advanced macro topics and one of them has yet another video for you to check out. Today I want to show you command options so uh, interestingly enough for every almost every command every major command at least uh, there's some options uh, flags if you will like command line flags. If, if you ever work with the Unix terminal. I can't really explain it any, any better. So there's options for every command or every major command. Uh, and that's what I wanna show you. And also um, there's special syntax with which you can actually navigate around your show file and um, manipulate even more aspects of different show objects. That sounds a little weird at first, but uh, let's let's get into it and then, then we'll see what I mean. All right, so first, the special options. There's a short little trick that reveals a huge variety of completely new ways of how you can use commands. And that is a simple slash and then a question mark. And if we actually execute that, let me, let me delete that, make this a little bigger. Also, by the way, I think we can really turn off the entry field here and instead turn on the horizontal scroll bar. All right. So um, here we can see that copy has different options. We can, for example, set a slash overwrite or slash O. And that means that this copy operation uh, actually overwrites the original or the, the content where, where it goes to. Then we can set merge. Um, and different different other stuff. So this no confirm thing, for example, that's also incredibly useful if you're building macros uh, that do a lot of copying and merging and, and all that sort of stuff, um, or you actually might replace old content. So the color pickers, for example, all they do is actually copy presets um, from one place to another. So if you pick a certain color, all it does is actually copy uh, the, the preset for that very color to like some some target uh, preset, and it actually uses this no confirm um, flag so that you can actually use the color picker without always having to confirm that yes you want to override that you know specific preset. All right, so what does that look like, and um, actually how how can we use it? So it's it's pretty simple. Let's just go and uh, by the way I turn on the command. Uh, mode. If you're in shortcut mode, actually exit that so you can freely type. So I'm just going to show you with the help of these groups. So let's just, first of all say copy group one at six. So I want to copy this over here. And now um, the first, yeah, let's let's just say look. Nope. Highlight mode, please. Yeah, perfect. So now what we can do, for example, is we can go copy. Um, group two at six. And now it's um, actually going to give us these different options. And I'm not going to do that, but instead I'm actually going to, um, again, if we scroll back up here, we have these different options. And one of the options is that we can actually merge them. So that's what I want to do. Um, I just want to merge the two. So I'm just going to go slash M. So now if we click on this group, you can see that both this first and the second group, they're both now part of this group over here. Um, actually, if we go, this is really interesting. If you go and click into this, um, into this command line, and then you just go arrow up on your keyboard, you can actually go through your previous uh, commands. You will get quite a few commands that have options. So let's see, add for example, yeah, there's there's quite a few options that you can that you can set up here. And then uh, let's say store, for example. There's also a ton of a ton of different options here. Wow, there's a lot of options in store, but I mean, makes sense. It's a big command. So in general, um, also let's pull up the help section. And I think I can't stress this enough um, that you actually have a complete help system inside of your console ready for you to use. So let's just go store and take a look at that keyword, store keyword over here. And here you can actually see all of these different options and also a description. And that's great. 
But one of the limitations that you get with these options is that not every command supports options and you know not every option of every command is actually documented in my experience. Um, and then as we just saw, if I want to do something as, as easy as actually removing one group out of that, I thought that it might be possible to, to use the copy command. Maybe there's a different command that supports that, but in general, I feel like the options that you get not necessarily always cover everything that you know you could imagine doing with that or that you can actually do through using the hard keys or the um, or the interface. So this is a really fun option uh, and you need to know about that because if you if you go and take a look at the documentation of, of one keyword, of one command key, then you will see a lot of options. And that just brings another level of um, of flexibility and control to your macro. So um, these options, this is where it gets really powerful. Um, and again, if you just take a look at the, the list of the keywords and you imagine that half of them have, you know, options, maybe just a third of them, then that's already another, another depth, another dimension to these macros. Uh, that's just hard to really fathom. So you can see these macros, they are incredibly powerful. Uh, don't forget to, to really focus on your show when getting into this uh, whole world of macros. All right, so the second thing I wanted to show you is something that actually um, will lead you back to a video of mine that I did roughly a year ago. And it had this really, it's not catchy, but more like um, almost dramatic title, Hacking Your Show File. But it's true to a degree I want to say. So let me just pull up the, the external one here. And what I did is I already loaded up these macros over here. Let me just store really quick. So these macros are freely available on my GitHub page. GitHub is a place for developers to share code. Um, you will see the, the link in the video description. Um, whoops, let me go back. So as you might know, I'm a software developer. And so GitHub is one of the, my main tools also for all my side projects. And um, this right here is a open repository where you can go and download different stuff that I worked on. And one of the things is this show file navigator, you will also find uh, a link to the video. And so these macros can be downloaded. Uh, they're actually up here. So, um, that's when you get these things. And the interesting part is that um, your show file actually is sort of like a data tree, if you will. I can't really explain it any, any other way. But here we have, for example, sequences. If we go into that, let's see, that's number 25. So we can go into 25. Um, and now we can see there's a sequence pool. And then we can go in that sequence pool in here, we can see all of our sequences. So the way that I did this, by the way, um, there's different commands for navigating. First of all, list is something that you might know as LS from Unix terminals. That will just uh, show you the contents of the, the current layer that you're in. And then if you go CD, which is typically change directory or change um, not destinations, it's change directories actually in the Unix world. So you just go CD and then you um, pick one of these um, one of these numbers here. So sequences, for example, I could also just go CD sequences, then I go list, uh, and then I can navigate into that and go list again. Um, and all these macros do is actually execute these different things. Um, but then also uh, automatically show you where you're at. So it's really helper tools to navigate around um, your show file quickly. And then here's what's really interesting. Um, you can see here that you have a list of all of these uh, sequences over here, and you can see that they have these different columns. Now, whenever these column names are green, you can actually set them with the help of a macro. So let's take a look at this one over here. Actually, I think sequence number two. Let's see if we have that somewhere on call here. 
Um, so example one, this is sequence number seven. So what we can do with the help of the assign command, again, let's try and find out the options here. There's quite a few, um, but one of the special things about assign is that we can actually go now assign, in this case, let's set sequence seven. So assign seven, and then we go slash, uh, we enter the attribute name in that case, name, and then equals um, new name for sequence. And now if we hit enter um, and go list again, then we can see that our sequence over here just changed names. And if we now go over to the command screen, guess what happened? Yep, that's right. This sequence over here all of a sudden has a new name. And that's where it gets really crazy. Um, there's a ton of ton of different object types that you can uh, explore in here. And so um, the, <laughs> the options here are really limitless. And that's what I mean by, you know, stick with uh, creating shows. You can really spend a lot of time building the perfect macro, but it doesn't really do you any good if you don't have a good use case to solve, um, you know, to build a macro for. So if you don't really have a pain point, then don't build something for it. That's something that I'm still struggling with in my professional life as a developer. I'm still trying to focus really on what's important and trying to focus on building really only the things that I need. And in terms of, of a show, that really means that you should only focus really on, on, on building and investing time into creating the kind of stuff that you actually need. All I'm saying is that it's a lot of fun to play around with macros and that's what makes this console really powerful. So go nuts, by all means, go ahead, go nuts, solve all the problems, build all the macros that you ever wanted to build, but be careful. Um, this is not the main point. This is not what people will actually see in the end. What they will see is your beautiful effects, your amazing uh, position presets, I don't know, and your crazy finger drumming skills on the executor buttons. So. That's it for this macro series. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you were able to pick up the basics of macros. I know they can be a little bit intimidating at first, but um, I think if you know you just go through the series and then you know link is in the video description to this complete playlist containing all of the um, macro tips series, then I think you are good to go. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for joining me on this uh, macro mini series. My name is Jonas. Do me a favor and subscribe to my channel if you want to support me emotionally. And if you have any questions, go over to our Facebook group. It's down in the video description. Da. I still don't have a catchphrase. I guess I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> That's a horrible catchphrase. See ya. <laughs>